sustainability, and green energy. Viking heritage. Welfare system. New Nordic food. Welcome to Denmark Explained, where we explore the rich tapestry of Danish culture, one captivating story at a time. Did you know that two of Denmark's biggest cities, Copenhagen and Aarhus, are breaking up with Microsoft? That's right, the Danish public sector is now planning to move away from the world's most famous software company. Why would a peaceful, high-tech Nordic country like Denmark suddenly walk away from Microsoft, a brand used by governments everywhere? But here's what most people don't know. This move isn't just about software. It's about power, independence, and control in an uncertain world. It's about Europe trying to stand on its own digital feet. And, you know, it might change how you work, study, or even live in Denmark. Today, we'll take you deep into this fascinating story. What Denmark's quiet tech revolution means for you as a traveler, expat, worker, or future Danish resident. Stay until the end to find out whether this bold gamble is genius or a dangerous mistake. But before we continue, please support the channel by pressing the like button, share, and hit subscribe. And if you want to see more, remember to click on the playlist link below in the description. Thank you. Let's rewind a bit. Why is Denmark, a rich, stable, globally connected country, suddenly pushing away Microsoft, the world's most trusted software giant? To understand this, you have to know about Europe's growing obsession with digital sovereignty. This idea is simple but powerful. European governments want their data, especially sensitive government data, to stay in Europe. They don't want it stored on servers in the US or controlled by American companies bound by US law, after years of leaks, spying scandals like Edward Snowden's revelations, and increasing fear of American surveillance laws such as the Cloud Act, European leaders, especially in countries like France, Germany, and now Denmark, have decided they need to protect their own digital spaces. Why Denmark and why now? Well, Denmark's government has long been progressive on privacy and public control. The Danish Data Protection Authority has warned about overdependence on U.S. cloud services. In 2022, they even ruled that Google Analytics might be illegal under EU law because it sends data to the U.S. Copenhagen and Aarhus, Denmark's biggest cities, are starting this shift because city governments handle tons of personal data, child care records, welfare, citizen emails, health data, Officials fear that these could end up in the wrong hands if American companies are forced by U.S. law to give access to their servers. So this is not just a tech upgrade, it's a fight for data control. And Denmark is throwing the first punch. You might be wondering, why Microsoft of all companies? After all, Microsoft isn't TikTok, it's not Facebook. It's the maker of the Word, Excel, and Teams software that runs nearly every government office in Europe. But here's the thing. Microsoft, like Google, Amazon, and Apple, is a US-based company. Under US laws like the Cloud Act, passed in 2018, American authorities can demand access to data stored on Microsoft's servers, even if those servers are located in Europe. For Denmark, a small but proud welfare state, this poses a problem. Their public services are built on trust. Every Dane gives huge amounts of personal data to the state, their medical history, their income, their education records. In return, the government provides free health care, education, pensions, and more. But what if this data could one day be demanded by a foreign government? What if Denmark's quiet reliance on Microsoft makes its public systems legally vulnerable to U.S. spying or data grabs? There's another layer politics. When Donald Trump offered to buy Greenland from Denmark in 2019, many Danes were shocked and insulted. Suddenly, America's influence felt uncomfortably close. Since then, Danish leaders have talked more openly about reducing U.S. economic and political influence, including in technology. So the move away from Microsoft is also symbolic. 
It's Denmark and perhaps Europe gently telling America, we'll make our own digital choices. Thank you. Okay, but what does this mean for you? You, the person thinking about moving to Denmark, studying here, or working for a Danish company? The answer, more than you think. If you plan to work in public sectors like education, health, social services, or even city offices, don't expect the usual Microsoft Office suite. Danish officials are pushing for open source tools like LibreOffice, the German-made cloud platform Nextcloud, and secure email systems that aren't tied to the US. For travelers or new residents, this might sound small, but it changes everything behind the scenes. Booking childcare, applying for housing, signing up for tax services, these could soon run on platforms unfamiliar to most foreigners. If you're a digital nomad or tech startup founder, Denmark's move could create unexpected opportunities. The government might pour millions into local or European software. If you create privacy-respecting secure tools, you could win Danish government contracts that once went to Microsoft. But if you rely on Outlook, Teams, or SharePoint to work with local clients, prepare to learn new systems. Because Denmark may politely refuse to let Microsoft handle its sensitive public sector business. For you, the foreign worker or expat, this means change is coming, and it might shape your Danish experience in ways you never expected. Are Danes worried about this? Actually, most are supportive, or at least curious. Denmark is a high-trust society. People here believe in public systems that protect the common good. They expect their government to be cautious about foreign control, whether it's American big tech or Chinese surveillance. A 2024 survey by Denmark's digitalization agency showed that 62% of Danes worry about personal data ending up with non-European companies. Among young Danes, ages 18 to 35, that number rises to 75%. Denmark has long preferred local control. Just look at its world-famous co-op supermarkets or public ownership of water and energy services. Technology is the next frontier. Some people, especially business leaders, do worry. They fear Danish companies will suffer if forced to abandon the powerful tools that Microsoft provides but many also hope this could spark a new golden age for Danish and European software firms, just like the wind energy boom made Vestas and Orsted global leaders. In short, most Danes see this as typical Danish carefulness, protecting their small but mighty society from outside interference. Of course, this bold plan is risky. First cost. Microsoft tools are expensive, but so is replacing them, training thousands of government workers to use new systems, LibreOffice, NextCloud, maybe even Linux desktops, will take time and money. Mistakes could disrupt services like tax offices, hospitals, or schools. Second, compatibility. Denmark is small, but its companies trade worldwide. How will they handle international business if public offices can't easily use Word or Excel files from global partners? Will this make Danish business life harder, especially for startups or foreigners? Third, quality. Europe's open source tools are improving fast, but can they really match Microsoft's reliability, security, and integration? What happens if critical services go down during the transition? This is the tightrope Denmark is walking, the dream of freedom versus the danger of isolation. So here's the big question for you. Is Denmark bravely leading Europe toward digital independence or making life harder for its citizens and businesses by ditching proven American tech? Which side do you believe is right? Comment below. We want to hear your view. It's a real dilemma. Digital freedom or global convenience? What's more important for Denmark's future and for yours if you plan to live here? But this is more than software. 
It's about what kind of country Denmark wants to be. For 100 years Denmark has been a quiet world leader. In wind energy, in design, in welfare, in happiness. Now it wants to lead again. This time in digital sovereignty. Expect this move to ripple into schools, hospitals, even the apps you'll use as a foreign resident. In the future, moving to Denmark may also mean learning to live without Microsoft, Google or Amazon tools in everyday life, because Denmark is trying to build its own European-based, citizen-controlled systems. That's why Denmark is often ranked the world's happiest country control trust, responsibility. And soon, maybe, control over its digital world too. So if you want to know how Denmark really works, and what makes this small nation punch above its weight, keep watching this channel. So, is Denmark setting the gold standard for Europe's digital future, or making its own life too complicated? What do you think? We hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us bring you more amazing content. Join us here at Denmark Explained, where we uncover the wonders of Danish culture one story at a time. See you in the next video.